In this video, I'll break down how to create a product commercial in Final Cut Pro 10 with only using images that I downloaded off of Google. Now, I don't even own these shoes. I literally just created this entire like product commercial with literally just downloading images off of Google. So it just goes to show that even though you may not have the actual product that you want to make, you know, a spec commercial for, you can actually just download images off of Google and create your own really cool like, you know, spec ad or promo for the company without even actually owning the product. So the first one I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and just create a project, Command N, and we'll just call this Nike um, commercial right here. You can call it whatever you want. Now I'm gonna go to format. I'm gonna change the format, make sure it's on vertical right here. I'm gonna change it to Rec 709, and I'm gonna keep the frame rate at 60 frames per second, and then change the resolution back to 1080. You wanna use 60 frames per second for, you know, like product ads or motion graphics, because it's just gonna make the animation look a lot smoother. And I'm just gonna click on OK right here so everything looks good. Let's click on OK to create the new project. So now that we have the project right here, let's just open it right here. Now, this is kinda of like controversial. Some people say use a gap clip, don't use, or some people say don't use a gap clip. I'm going to go ahead and just use um, a gap clip right here. Just click on option W and I'm going to click on control D and we'll just set this maybe to like um, two minutes right here. Basically what a gap clip allows you to do is it basically allows you to avoid the magnetic timeline. Some people would say don't do that. I like doing it because sometimes it can be really helpful. So for example, I can you know, have the non magnetic timeline right here and also have the magnetic timeline. So if I want to you know, switch the magnetic timeline, I'll just drop my footage right here. But if I don't want to use the magnetic timeline, I can just you know use the gap clip. So it's really nice to be able to switch back and forth between a non-magnetic timeline and the magnetic timeline. So what you want to do next is find your photos. Now all these photos that I got were from GOAT. I would highly encourage you to go ahead and go to GOAT or go to Nike.com um, to find these photos or you can go on Google. So let's see right here. So I have a photo of the Jordan 1. This is the one that I'm going to use. So just place it on the timeline. Now really the only way to cut out an image in Final Cut is by using the draw mask. So let's go to the effects panels. Let's scroll all the way down until we find mask. As you can see right here, here is the draw mask. So let's just take the draw mask right here and I'm just going to cut out the Jordan 1 right here. So of course you can zoom in or close, as close as you want, but I'm just going to do a rough cutout just for the sake of the video. You know, I don't want to, you know, like, you know, spend like 20 minutes cutting this out. I have a whole video called the how to make a freeze frame video where I really break down how to use the draw mask. But there we go. There's just a rough cutout. Obviously put a lot more time and effort if it's a, you know, a more serious edit, but just for the tutorial, I'll just leave it how that is. I know, I know that looks really bad, but just for the sake of the tutorial, let's just leave it how it is. Now it's really important anytime you're doing like products or text or anything like that, I would highly encourage you to use this really cool effect called the drop shadow. The drop shadow cre uh, allows you to, to create depth. So let's take a graduate generator, uh, custom generator right here. Now this is just going to be a placeholder. I will get rid of this, but let's just change the color so we can actually see the drop shadow because it won't work on a black background. So head over to the effects panel. Let's go to all right here. Now we're just going to type in drop shadow. If I take the drop shadow and just apply it onto the shoe, as you can see, it creates or it basically almost gives the shoe almost like a 3D look. As you can see, it just kind of gives the shoe a little more depth. So let's turn it on and off. As you can see, it just gives the shoe a little more depth and it just helps make the shoe look a little bit more 3D. So I would always encourage you to drop shadow. Now I'm gonna delete the background. Obviously you won't see because it's black on black. You can, you know, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm just gonna show you all the different steps, all the different tips and tricks that I did to be able to, you know, create this commercial. And hopefully these, you know, tips and tricks will help you out. But the drop shadow is a must because it's going to create depth and it's just going to make it look a lot nicer. Now the next step is to um, animate the shoe. So as you see right here, I have the shoe. I'm going to use keyframing. Now I'm going to show you a, a whole bunch of really cool methods when it comes to animation. So go to the beginning of the clip, drag on the x-axis, the scale or whatever you want. I'm going to animate the x-axis. So just drag it off the screen. Make sure you're at the beginning of the clip. Now once you did that, now you want to go here and see this little icon right here, this little like diamond plus icon. Click on it. As you see, it says add keyframe. So you're just adding a keyframe. That's really important. Now now let's go for maybe like 20 frames. So let's go for like 20 frames, you know, as far as you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take the position. I'm going to reset it to 10 or you can do negative, negative 100 pixels. It's whatever you want. I basically want it like starting off the screen and sliding on. So if I play it, as you see, what's going to happen is the shoe is just going to slide onto the screen right there. So that looks really nice. And you say, wait a minute, I don't really like, you know, the keyframe path or how it's animating. Well, I can actually click on the clip right here. Let's just go over it here and right click and click on show video animation. Now I'm going to go to transform under the arrow, go to position. And now I can right click on the keyframes and change the keyframe to a linear or smooth path. A path. So you can animate the, uh, the keyframe path, which can be really helpful depending on the look you're trying to get. 
Now if I go over here to motion blur, motion blur is really important. So let's take moderate motion blur and just apply it. And basically what you're doing is you're just, you just want to apply the motion blur over where the keyframing is, keyframe animation is taking place. Because what's gonna, what's gonna happen is it's going to smooth out the animation. So if I play it right here, hopefully the playback is smooth. As you can see, that just creates a really cool blur effect. So all it does is it helps smooth out the motions. You can see that looks a lot better than you know, having it without motion blur. Another cool animation preset or an animation, you know, another plugin you can use for animation is if I go to cutouts right here, I just have this, you know, pre-made cutout that I already did, and I just changed the background to a PNG and export as a, with a transparent background, but you know, that's not really relevant to, you know, this video. But I'm going to go to scale right here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down to 60%. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on um, option G, and I'm just going to call this um, bounce um, animation. Now just like the motion blur, anytime I, I like announce anything that's a plugin i'll make sure the links are down in the description below so all i did was i scaled it down and then create a compound clip now i'll go over here now this will, again this will be in the, down in the description below i believe it costs about 15 dollars but this is really cool animations you can see right here here are all of the different animation presets it basically creates that bounce animation so if you want that really cool bounce animation i would highly encourage you to go ahead um, and check out this pack so let's scroll up right here until we find scale in and just going to apply the scale and animation onto the clip. Now it's really important that you scale it down and to cre uh, cre create a compound clip because it's going to reset the clip. So if I play it, all this is going to happen is you can see the shoe will just bounce on screen. So it's a really nice animation. And let's say I want to click on it right here and I want to scale it to like 140, something like that and move the position up a little bit. You'll probably have to mess with it. This should look okay, but if it doesn't, you know, you can go back and mess with the scale and everything like that. But as you can see you create this really cool animation so you have this really cool sliding shoe animation and then you have this really cool balance animation and this is the one that I used in the beginning of the promo now another really cool animation that I did in this video or the promo is this really cool sliding shoe animation so I'm gonna click on it right here and I'm gonna go ahead and just scale this down to let's say like 40% and maybe I'll go like maybe like 75%. So scale right here, let's take the X axis and let's just move the shoe off the screen. Now all I'm gonna do is create a copy of the shoe, take the shoe and then just take the X axis and then drag the shoe right here. Now I'm going to select these two clips, hopefully I'm not going too fast. Take the X axis, X axis, drag it around. Now I'm going to create a third copy. I think you'll pretty much understand what I'm trying to do. Now click on the third copy, readjust the X axis. So there we go. That looks pretty good, you know, just, just as a placeholder. Now we're gonna do is we're going to create this right here go into option G and we'll just call this I don't really know exactly what to call these animations but call this sliding animation so there you go now you have this really cool sliding animation now go to the x-axis and we're just going to drag this all the way to the beginning now, as you can see we just have this really cool like all these shoes are connected together place a keyframe on it and then we're going to go to the, the clip go back one frame and we're just going to drag the x-axis and we're just basically animating the position so I'll wait for final cut to render this the shoe will be sliding across the screen so if I play it right here as you can see the shoes are sliding across the screen now if you see the animation is kind of weird we can go to show video animation go to transform go to position and I want the keyframe to be more of a linear animation than rather like that kind of weird curved animation so it depends on again like the look you're trying to go for so if I play it right here this should look a lot better as you can see there you go now the shoes are sliding across the screen so let's go ahead and create a copy now you ask how do I create that kind of like reversed or like inverted um, effect so create a copy we're going to create another another compound clip and we're going to call this um, reverse right here so all we was to create a compound clip go to the speed options and click on reverse clip now that animation is going in the opposite direction so we have this really cool kind of like inverted animation so I go over right here take the y-axis drag it up and then I'll wait for final cut to render and you have these really cool the shoes are sliding in opposite directions so that's how you create that really cool animation that I showed in the beginning of the video so you see there you go now you obviously you can go faster or slower depending on what you want but that's how you create that really cool um, animation now another really cool animation that I did was have the different shoes sliding on. So I'm going to place a shoe right here and then maybe I want to take this shoe and just place it on top right there. So I'll show you how to create that really cool kind of like where the shoe like slides on. So what you want to do is you want to go out to 50 or uh, 25%, go to transform and then just drag it all the way to the edge um, right there. As you can see right here, you can kind of go right here. Now I can place, I can select these two clips and just test out this animation just to see if it's what I like so that should be good enough now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these clips and we'll just call this 
um, animation. I'm, I'm not even really sure what to call these anymore. But now those two clips are connected together. So if I go back to fit and I place a keyframe on position, those two clips are now connected together. However, you can't see the one on the other side. So let's maybe you know go for this might be go a little too slow. But let's just drag the x-axis. As you can see, there you go. The shoes are connected together. And that's how I created the, I, I did a couple of those really cool sliding animations. So if I play it, as you can see, the shoe is connected together. And that's how you create that really cool um, sliding animation. Now another really cool hack that I found was from Motion VFX. Now this is gonna cost money, but obviously you don't have to use this. I'm just trying to go over a whole bunch of really cool um, ideas when it comes to animation. But this M Channel Modern plugin, and I would just encourage you to do this too. If you find these really cool logo animations, you can actually replace this with products. So if I place it right here, I honestly have no idea why I never thought of this. So instead of having a logo for the animation, you can actually just click the shoe with a product as the drop zone instead of using the logo for the drop zone. So it's a really cool hack that I didn't even think about. So what you want to do is click on the logo right here, go to the title icon, scroll down, and where it says drop zone, let's select a shoe instead of a logo. And honestly, I have no idea why I never thought of this before. So if I play it right here, it creates this really cool logo animation. And there you go, you the product as the logo. Now I can go ahead and just scale it up if I want. And now you have this really cool kind of animation preset. So I would, I would look for some really cool like logo animations. And you know, you could just use it for a product, uh, like a, a product video a product video which is really cool You're, instead of having the logo this would normally where the logo would go you can just replace it with a product and I, like I keep saying I'd never thought of it before and I'm gonna look for you know logo presets because you can create really cool you know um, animations also for um, product videos product videos which is a really cool idea and the last animation idea is this really cool plugin called add motion now I'm sure you have probably heard of it before so let's just take a cutout I'm going to show you basically how to use the Add Motion plugin. Now this plugin costs $50, so it's definitely more on the pricey side. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead over to scale. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, 80%, and I'm going to create a compound clip and call this Add Motion. Basically, you're just trying to reset the scale so it's not so the Add Motion plugin is not going to be all messed up. Now what you want to do is go to Add Motion and then just click on this Add Motion plugin and then just place it onto the clip right here. Now I have a preset or you know a settings that I already have created. What I have, and you can you know do your own thing, you know depending on obviously what you're trying to do. So as you can see right here, you're just going to add the add motion plugin um, onto the actual cutout or whatever you, you're trying to animate. Basically, it's a way of animating without actually using keyframes. So if I click on it right here, I have a couple different presets. So we're going to change the, the if I click on the clip right here, I'll just click on the clip. So I'm just going to click on the clip right here. I'm going to go to duration and I'm going to change the duration to two. I'm going to change the takeoff to ease two, and then I'm going to go to the landing and um, click on snagged. So there are the, the preset stuff that I already have. So it's basically lasting for two seconds or not, not exactly two seconds, but it's lasting for like two. And then you basically, instead of having like a smooth, a linear keyframe, you have this really eased and this really kind of like snagged um, animation. Now the A is the start point and the B is the end point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the scale for the start point to 30%. I'm going to drag the shoe right off the screen like this. You can drag it off as far as you want. Now that's the start point. Now I need to make sure I go ahead and set the end point so this is when you know where it's starting and now where the animation is going to end now i'm not going to change much except i'm going to the y axis and i'm going to change it to 360 right here so it's basically going to do a 360 spin as it scales up and uh, kind of like comes on the screen so it's this really cool animation i'll show you what it looks like it's really hard to do just in final cut with keyframes this definitely makes it a little bit easier and if you have the money i would definitely encourage you to, to try out this plugin so i play this plugin right here as you can see that's really cool cool um, animation so it, it like grows on the screen and it creates this really cool like 3d um, rotation um, animation which I think is pretty cool now, another really important part of product videos is having a really cool animated background now, the two places that I would encourage you to go ahead and you know use for backgrounds is the motion VFX plugin M channel modern and has some really cool um, animated backgrounds as well as this really cool graphics pack that I've already made a video on as you can see right here here if you're wondering you know how I create that um, logo animation it's also also from this really cool um, graphics pack so if I scroll down right here until I find the background section as you can see right here here are a whole bunch of really cool um, backgrounds so again like I said before I've already made a video on this really cool plugin so let's take this background and just place it right underneath um, this clip we'll just try to take the background place it right underneath and I'm just going to trim it to this clip right here so now you have this really cool animated background and I'll go over a couple way a couple little hacks when it comes to um, creating animated backgrounds so as you can see right here 
Now you have this really cool background preset. Now a really cool thing that you can do in Final Cut, I'm actually I'm gonna take the ease out uncheck it right here so you can actually take the colors from the actual photo which is really cool if you're trying to match the background with the photo so if I click on the background right here let's just click on this right here so let's scroll right here and I want to go ahead and change this to kind of like a red color well if I go over here this color picker I can change it to red so let's say I want to click on this icon right here go to this color picker and let's just we want the red too and there you go now you can kind of have that red so you can actually pick or take the colors from the actual like photo which is really helpful when you're creating Know, videos or product videos the color picker and then let's just change this to red and there you go now it kind of matches of course you can you know, adjust it here and there but there you go now it kind of has that red color from the actual video so let's go over here and let's say I want to change though to like a white color so we can color pick the white from the shoe and there we go we can click on this color and then we can color pick it and change it white and there you go now that you know kind of looks a little bit weird but you can of course you know adjust it to your liking but I just want to show you that you can actually take the colors from the actual photo itself which can be really helpful and now you have this really cool um, animation and of course put a lot more time and effort into it but I just want to show you the basics or just some different little hacks and things that I've learned when trying to do product videos now another important part of product videos is text now I also use some text from add motion I mean from uh, M channel meta from motion BFX so I use this text effect and also this graphics collection also has like I said before you know never mind the FCPX title collection as you can see has a whole bunch of really cool titles but if you want to create some really cool titles for uh, free if you're doing vertical videos I would highly encourage you to create this really cool text repeater effect. So I click on Control T and create a new title. Let's just trim it right here. So maybe I want to trim it something like this. You know, I'll just leave it how it is. So this really cool title right here. Now I'm going to go over and just create a new title. So we'll just name this um, Jordan One. The text that I really like is called Futura. So let's go to Futura and then condensed bold, condensed extra bold. Let's scale it up. And I like to go to outline right here, go to show, and then I will change it to like a white color. And there you go. You have this really cool text effect. Now this really cool text repeater, I'll show you how to do it. I do it in a lot of my videos. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna go five frames forward and you're going to create a copy holding option. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to click on it right here and you're going to hold down option and create a copy now you're going to do one for the bottom layer hold down option and create a copy so if i go right here now i'm going to actually you know, go to the first text right here and i'm just going to center the text by using the horizon grids so let's just center the text something like this now we're going to take the text right here and we're just going to adjust the text to something like that looks pretty good now let's go to the bottom text and we're just going to bring the Y axis down and there you go. Now you have this really cool text repeater. Now what you want to do now is now you want to go one, two, three. So now we're going to go every three frames and we're just going to create a copy. So we're going to go like this, one, two, three, create a copy, just hold down option to create a copy. And now we're going to hold down, we're just going to trim it and we're going to take the Y axis, bring it up. And then we're going to go to this text layer drag it down and we're just going to trim it right here and then take the y-axis and then bring the text all the way down so that looks really cool as you can see final cut to render now you have this really cool text repeater effect now i'm going to change this one go to Control d and we'll do like 15 frames and we'll do this one Control d like 15 frames right there now what you want to do is you want to go to the end go one two three go three frames forward trim it and then trim this one and then go one two three trim it and there you go now you have this really cool text repeater so it pops on the screen and then pops off and then what you can do too is you can actually go over here to this click right here click on that right here and you can actually save all form and appearances to like save a, te a text preset as you can see right here i have a text preset now i'm going to go ahead and select it right here option g and we'll just call this text right here so now you have this really cool compound clip that now you can place it underneath um, your animations. So if I just zoom out right here, now I'm going to take it and just place the text and we're just going to drop the text and put it right underneath, maybe something like this. Obviously it's going to be a little short, but just for the sake of the video. So as you can see, it has this really cool animation and then you have this really cool like text repeater effect. So that's how you create that infamous text repeater effect. You go every five frames, create copies, go every three frames, create copy, then go every three frames, three frames, three frames, and so on and so forth. And you just keep repeating those steps until you get the look that you want.
And the last step for creating really cool product videos is having some sort of music track. The two places that I would encourage you to you know, find music or use music from are Epidemic Sound and Artlist. I think those are the two best places to get music. So the most important thing you want to do is you saw in the intro of the video that I showed is you want to edit to the beat. Now there's not a really great way of showing you know how to do it, but basically what you want to do is you want to obviously have the, the volume turned all the way up and you'll kind of hear like a spike in the audio. So I can try to like turn the volume up on my computer right here I'll just try to turn it up and just kind of see if you can actually hear you know what's going on so what you want to do is you want to go frame by frame until you hear a spike in the audio so I'll kind of I'll, I'll be quiet and see if you can hear I'm not sure if you can hear it through the mic but I'll kind of go frame by frame right here as you can probably hear as you can see right there that's kind of where the audio spikes right here so you can kind of hear it um you know actually when you go frame by frame so hopefully that's not too loud I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if you can actually hear it but I'm gonna go frame by frame as you can see right there, you hear you hear like that spike in the audio, and there you go. That's where you would like you know place the first clip. So now we can go you know the next frame, and then just kind of go frame by frame, and then right here or even right there. So it depends on where you want to go. So probably something like right here. Now you want to place a marker so you can hear the spike in the audio. Hopefully you can hear it. I'm not exactly sure if you can. And now what you want to do is now you want to place your clip. So here's where the first beat is. So let's just place it and we're going to trim it. And now I'm going to take this animation and I'm just going to line it up with the marker. And as you can probably see, you already saw in the intro, you know, all the different markers, but that's why I like using the gap clip is you can, it's really easy to edit to the beat. Now it's also the last thing you want to do is you want to fade out the music. So let's just say we want to fade out right here, hold down option to create audio keyframes so all I'm doing is I'm holding down option and I've created audio keyframes and now I can just fade out or fade up the music so that's how you create this really cool fades out basically how you like audio duck in Final Cut and those are you know hopefully that hopefully that wasn't too quick but you want to edit the beat go frame by frame until you hear a spike in the audio and then you want to make sure you fade up the audio or you can reverb the audio it's all dependent on what you want to do and that's pretty much it. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, I have a playlist with over 290 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. So you want to watch more videos like this, definitely go ahead and check out that playlist. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.